Hey what's up guys, it's Console, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a zombie XP farm along with a crusher. Um, I know most of the times when people make zombie XP farms, a like commonly known one is to use water in order to um, ele um, elevate them and drop them back down so that they're at half a heart or one heart. Um, but this is the one that I used in my LP world. Um, anyway, this is going to be a multi-part tutorial. Uh, the first part is going to be showing you guys the redstone portion of it, which is going to be the crusher as well as the blocker. Um, and then I'll show you guys how to set up your spawner. So if I remember, I'll try to put different times in the description for you guys to go to so you can learn each part of your here for a specific thing. I know sometimes people may be looking only for the blocker, well not blocker, the um, crusher and blocker. Um, or how just to set up the spawner um, itself. So first off, we're going to be working with the crusher here. Um, the one that I wanted to use in my LP world, I wanted to use a button and not a lever with the crusher. So pretty much how this works, it uses a T flip flop, um, which is right here. This here is a RS neural latch that connect to the piston to crush them. And I also have redstone here to pretty much reset the T flip flop because with the T flip flop, when you hit the button, the redstone will come on and stay on as you hit it again. So I wanted to have it set up so I can hit the button once and I'll reset itself as well as work the way it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and start trying to make this. So the material you're going to need for this, um, a button of course. You're going to need redstone block, redstone, repeater, um, torch, and pistons. As well as a block for building in order to make the T flip flop or if you want to place your redstone or anything specific. So I'm going to be using a block of iron. Um, I know people won't be using that in the LP world unless you have like an overabundance of iron. Alright, so first off you want to have your panel to actually, well, put the button on. So I'm just going to put up this, you know, too high thing here. So first off you want to set the T flip flop. So I want to go, a good, uh, I would say one block back so that the T flip flop is not automatically connected here because you need to have your piston and redstone block here to reset it, reset it. So you're going to need redstone. Go up. Well, let's set the pistons up first. All right, redstone. Pistons, one here. Give it two blocks and place another piston here and your redstone block. And then place two blocks on top of the redstone block. Torches on each side and redstone on top. And what's pretty much going to happen when this gets powered, I believe it, you know, it um, turns off the torches and allows the pistons to switch back and forth. So if we do this, for example, uh, let's just place our, you see the torches go off and you hit this and it switches. That's pretty much how it works. Um, <clears throat> so right here is when you want to have the line for the redstone. So let's just go two blocks forward, place a redstone here and a repeater. You want to place a block right here, go two blocks this direction and place, no, three blocks, I'm sorry. Um, your torch will go here, redstone, okay I was right, one block, I'm sorry. And a torch here. This is going to be the start of the RS Um So you guys can see what we have done so far. So here you want to go in this direction with repeaters, you want to go 12 blocks. So one, two, three, And I'm just going to place these blocks down. And you want to have repeaters facing this direction. Going this way. And you also want repeaters going in this direction. So you're going to need 12 more. The only thing that's different about here is you want to go have blocks like this. You don't want to have a repeater in this space here. You want to have this a redstone line. Um, so repeater here and repeater here. And pretty much you're going to still have 12, so go all the way back. And you're probably going to have to go forward, well, back one more block here. So that's one, two, three. 12 repeaters. Now you want to connect these at the end with a redstone line. Alright, so this is what we have so far here. We've pretty much set up the T flip flop and the RS nor latch. Um, next, go ahead and take all these repeaters and put them on, I believe it's four ticks, yes. Everybody, 
says, you know, some people will call it three ticks. I think more redstone people will call it four. And let's make sure everything is back. All right. So next we're going to go ahead and set up the um, reset for the T flip flop, which is why I said leave this redstone here. You want to go out two blocks and make sure that you're not at a block this near this one. So you can either go out and around, well, go out and around like this. But to save space, I'll just go down like this. And you want to come up to where this is here. So for the piston, the redstone block is going to be placed right there. So the piston has to be a block back. No, that's wrong. Your piston wants to be connected to this, like this. So you can see that. And to power the piston, I'm going to have a block here with a redstone. So as you can see, it's pretty much working, and it will come back. The only problem is it powers it again, so in order to make it so that the redstone turns off, you have to hit it again, and it'll pretty much go all the way back around, as you can see. So in order to make that not happen like that, uh, you want to connect the redstone to the piston up here, and I just use the repeater here. So that now when you hit the button, T flip flop comes on. Powers the RS no latch, it'll come all the way around. This redstone gets powered, black is pushed forward again. RS no latch goes around again, but the torch is not powered, so it's going to turn off and reset pretty much. And that's the, how I did that. Now, in order to power the crusher itself, uh, I'm going to show you the, just a simple way of doing this, and most likely it's going to be different in your LP world or whatever world you're going to be building this in. Place a block on top of the redstone torch. I'm going to come out a few blocks. Um, let's say I put the crusher here. I want to have piston, block, the space to hold the zombies. Alright, let's grab a spawning egg. Place a zombie in here. And let's connect the redstone. So, right here, this is where the torch is right under that block. And connect that to the piston. And now, when you hit this, it'll be crushed down to one or two hits. So he has two hits, but I'll be showing you guys how to kill a lot of zombies very fast. Or you won't end up just standing there wasting your food and just hit a lot of zombies. So that's the crusher portion of this. Next, we're going to set up the blocker. All right, for this part of the tutorial, we're going to be working on the blocker. And if you don't know what the blocker is, pretty much when you crush the zombies, you don't want any more of the zombies to be falling, well, trying to fall down or gather at the very top. So that when they get crushed, more zombies get in with the damaged ones. So it's kind of a way to filter which ones are hurt and are ready to be killed. And which ones are ready to be put in there. So to do that, we're going to go to the block above where the zombies will be standing. Um, zombies, zombie, zombies, zombies stand two um, blocks high. So the third block above them will be where the crusher will be. And which will be right where this hole is. So you're going to take... Your piston. Let's try to get this right. I don't think I can do that. See, piston. Block. So that looks like it's just part of the wall. And to power this, it's going to pretty much, well, when it's powered, let's just do that. It'll come forward and stop more zombies from falling down. That's pretty much just how it works. So to power this, I'm going to be powering it with a T flip flop and a button as well as just like this one. That's how I have it set up in the LP world. So we're pretty much just going to use another T flip flop. And you don't have to do anything as complicated as that. Just have it connected to the piston. 
So I'm going to do it over here. So let me see. Set the same thing, button. Except this one, you don't have to have a reset for it. And let me turn off my Skype notifications. All right, so the button, redstone. Well, this is where the pistons are going to be. So piston, two blocks, piston, block of redstone, two blocks above that, redstone, redstone torch, redstone torch, I mean. Uh, do that, and with the button, push some back and forth. So... I'll just connect this here. Um, let's just have it connected like so. So it'll be redstone, redstone. Let's see, one, two, three. Like so. So that way, when we don't want any more zombies to come down, we'll hit the button. It comes forward. So, pretty much how this will look. Let's just spawn some more zombies. Wait, is there a hole over here or something? No, there's second damage. So you can see the zombies can't fall down, but since I'm playing in a snapshot, they're kind of glitching through the block. Um, and then we hit the blocker again. Opens and allows them to fall down. So that's pretty much the blocker. Um, and I'll show you the LP version I had so that you can kind of see how I set up it in more of a compact way. So that's pretty much the blocker and the crusher. Let's move on to how to actually set up the spawner. Alright, so we're now in our, well, my OLP world. Well, not really OLP, but this is something that's completely gone now. I just want to go ahead and show you guys how I have the redstone set up in more of an LP type environment. Um, let's go ahead and turn the crush or blocker off. So this is pretty much where I have these zombies collect. Um, as you can see, the water is right there where they get washed down and fall off the edge. So I would normally hit the blocker. This will cause this block here to come this way to make sure more can't fall down. And then I hit the crusher. I see this block comes out. The zombies will be spawning right here and they'll get crushed down to about half a heart. And once this goes back, what I normally use to kill them, I would use splash potions of healing. Because um, normally I have about two to 300 zombies in this small area. And I want a splash potion. And they all die as an experience. Um, how I have this wired. So since I have a button here and a button here, I have the wiring on the side of the block so that this gets powered. Um, this is the T flip flop. I have the wiring going all the way up and around and this leads to the crusher which is up there. And this here is the, no not the crusher, that's the blocker. This is the crusher here. This button here, as you can see it's pretty much set up the same way as I did it in the um, creative world. And, but instead of having the crusher over there, I have the redstone line coming up and around to right here. And when we break this, this is where we end up. So you can see that the piston is here. So yeah, I just want to go ahead and show you guys that right quick. Just so you can get a few ideas about how you want to have it wired. Um, as you can see, I have mine towards the side of the room where the zombies collect there. This is on the side. And yeah, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to how to set up the spawner in order to get the, I guess I'll say best efficiency for them to get XP and have them spawn and so on. Alright, so we're back in our creative world and now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to pretty much set up your spawner to get all the zombies into one point so you can crush them and kill them for an XP farm. Um, this here is just an example. I could do this in the overworld, the actual overworld and show you guys how to do it, but I feel like doing it in um, a super flat will be a lot easier to really show you the setup. Let's go ahead and switch time to day. Anyway, so this here is the cube. Um, you can see that the iron block represents the spawner. You have the water, the way the blocks are set up. I also have lanterns in the ceiling. That will be something I'll talk about later. Um, and the water pretty much goes onto over here where they'll be collecting. And yeah, so let's go ahead and show you guys how to do this. It's actually extremely simple. So first off, um, let's go a good amount of blocks away from there. Let's go up three. So let's say you find your spawner. Spawner is on the floor, and this here will represent the floor. So you find your zombie spawner. You have your little room here. So let's grab some torches. 
you want to go ahead and disable your spawner and people normally just put you know um torches all around the room and the best way i've come up with this disable spawner is just to place torches like this on it and it'll pretty much stop them from spawning for most things except for things like silverfish um so there you go so you want to go ahead and clean out your room and you want to have it so that well set it up so that you have four blocks in each direction from the spawner so there's the spawner so there's two three four two three four two three four like that and you're also going to have your floor in here so let's just fill the rest of this in so you have a giant square room And that should be right. Let's see, three, four. All right. So that's pretty much what you're going to end up with for the floor. So now you need to go ahead and set up your area to for the things like water and so on and so on. Um, I think that's horrible grammar. Anyway, so something I'd like to do is to make sure there's two air blocks of airspace below the spawner and above it, so that let's go up to your ceiling will be up here. There's two blocks from the spawner and the ceiling. You also want to go down two blocks. So that, you know, one, two. So that, you know, two blocks in the floor will be right there. And still have it so you're going the four blocks in each direction from the spawner. But at the same time, you want to go down two more blocks. So, yeah, let me go ahead and do that. And this is what you should end up with here. So you, as you can see, four blocks in each direction from the well, spawner, um, two blocks down, two blocks up, and yeah. So if you're doing this, nine times out of ten if you're doing this in your LP world, you, all you got to do is mine out blocks, and I have to actually remove the blocks and put them back since I'm in creative. But um, yeah, this is pretty much how it turns out. Um, so one thing I would go ahead and do first is to place up your walls. Um, so you're pretty much just going to go around this extra block here, and this is where your wall will be. And it's not going to go up too high. It's going to be like a few, a full cube underground. So you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. Let's just go all the way back around. As you can see, and make sure once you go out your four blocks, go the extra block to place the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and place, we'll fill in the rest of the space to make the cube. And then we can start working on the water part of this. And this is how your room should look. There you go. Alright, now to place the water. So pretty much once you find which direction you want the zombies to collect. So let's say we will have them collect over here. Um, let's go to the spawner and go over to here. You're going to place down your walker, water in each one of these corners that's pretty much facing your opening so the zombies gonna collect here we walk in corner corner there you go and the water is not going to come all the way out to here so in order to make that happen we're going to have to get rid of these blocks pretty much around this little staircase type pattern around where the water ends um, and I'm going to go ahead and replace the blocks here and there we go so once you go ahead and do that you want to go ahead and break these blocks and it will pretty much cause the water to continue flowing and as you notice as you can see from how the water is kind of going the water always ends up going to the central point here and go forward and it goes for two more blocks so now to make them collect um, if you just have them go to here they can actually push it back against the water stream so you want to drop them down three blocks one two three and let's just cover this up here. Let's come around. All right. So when they get to this, uh, this water stream here, this is the edge, they'll fall off the edge and land right here. So this is the area in which they collect. 
Now you can do a few things with this area. I think most people normally do it like this, so that there's like a small space here where you can hit the zombies if you need to. Um, how I like to do this though, is I place a slab here and make sure that this is too high. That way, um, there's only a half, like a one and a half block space for them to stand on, and they cannot actually walk through here. Only problem with setting this up like this is if a lot of zombies actually get into here, they can actually glitch right on out and walk through. And when I say a lot of zombies, I'm saying anywhere between two and three hundred plus, uh, which is normally how many I use when I'm in. Well, I used to use when I was enchanting things with the zombie spawner. Um, yeah, so this is how I normally have it set up. Plus, I also use a hopper with this, so I'll talk about that later. And that's pretty much how you do it. So let's go ahead and go into normal. Let's go back inside. Make sure you remove the blocks from the spawner. Well, our little fake spawner here. Well, they, not blocks, torches, to make sure that the room is not light and they can spawn. And let's just throw a few zombies in here. And we'll show you guys what happens. There goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And these guys are kind of fighting each other. They'll eventually get through, as you can see. Let's go ahead and make it daytime again. Wait. And this is where they pretty much collect, as you can see. Um, and let's go ahead and switch the peace tools to get rid of these guys. So as you saw before, I have the crusher normally set up right there, and the blocker is set up right there, so that way the blo um, block will come forward. Stop them from being able to come down. Crusher comes forward. Crushes them to half a heart. And yeah, so that's pretty much how I had this set up. Um, a few things you can do. What I would do is number one, add glowstone lanterns in the ceiling of the spawner. Um, I'm going to show you how to, just how to do it more of a symmetrically type way, I guess. Just because I like to have my things evened out, I guess. Let's go ahead. So it'll be lantern, lantern. As well as lanterns along here. And when all of these lanterns actually get powered, let's grab ourselves levers to do that. It'll actually disable the spawner from spawning anything due to the high light level. And I'll actually connect this to maybe like a lever or something down near where, well, in the area where these guys are collecting, where you're going to have to crusher, the blocker, and so on. That way, um, if you don't want any more to spawn, you can turn the lights on to stop them from spawning, or you can turn the lights off to cause them to spawn, depending on where you are. I know some people's computers aren't really as good as people like mine, um, so it can cause your world to lag, having a lot of zombies just constantly spawning here. So, yeah, that's something I would do. Um, something else I like to do is when you have two or three hundred zombies here, like I normally used to, um, when you have a half slab, you can actually place a hopper under it, and when the items go into the half slab, they'll go into the hopper. So, you can set up some kind of system with the hoppers in order to sort the like rotten flesh, potatoes, carrots, and any armor they actually drop. So that's something else I like to do. And how to kill these guys, I like to set up a enchant not enchanting station, um, approaching brewing station. And once you crush these guys to about half a heart, and you have a health potion, splash health potion. You want to take one of these, and let's say you have like two or three hundred zombies here, and then boop, and it'll pretty much kill all of them. Um, I believe they actually gain health if you hit them with a damage potion. I don't think it actually works, but with a health potion, it will hurt them. Um, you kill almost any, all of them instantly. You don't have to just stand here and just constantly punch blocks in order to, well, punch them to kill them. So it's a lot faster. So yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a thumbs up rating. Um, I'll also try to leave links in the description to like each part of the tutorial if you need to go back to certain things. If you have questions about this, leave that in the comments below. Um... I know people sometimes say like, hey, will you come join my server and make this? Just ask the questions in the comments below or you can tweet me, 
send me a private message i'll try to respond as best as possible or if you can actually upload a video if you need help with that can show you what you can do and yeah if you're brand new make sure you subscribe for more content if you have any things you would like me to try to tutorials on to help you guys leave that below and that's pretty much it i think i said that's pretty much it like four or five times i have problems with saying that stuff anyway later